everyone, it's Chelsea from Pip Rock Tio Studio, and today I'm sharing with you my Gina B. Aaron's Designs Etsy Shop Design Team project for June 2019. This month, we did a fun thing that was like a, a swap in between ourselves and another person in the design team for Gina's Designs. And my partner was Leslie McGrath, and I will link uh, her her channel below the video so that you can see whatever she made with the things that I sent her. And this I'm showing you is all the things that she sent me. Painty papers, little tags, um, stamped tissue paper with some of, some of Gina's designs, stamps, um, just all kinds of things like that. So I decided to use some of the stuff she sent. Obviously there's a ton. I'm not going to be able to use it all up, but I decided to use some of the painty paper, some of the coffee dyed paper, some of the stamped tissue paper, and I think one of the tags, I don't know, things from the package <laughs> to make a art journal page. This is my Dilutions, uh, yeah, Dilutions, yes, small journal. And so I'm still trying to finish it up. There's a few more pages. I decided to make a page in it in my endeavor to try to finish it. So I'm starting out with some of the painty papers. This appears to be um, paint, probably craft paint because it's very, very matte. Um, craft paint is often very matte feeling. It's uh, almost chalky because of the fillers they put in it. Appears to be that on maybe some construction paper. Leslie is a teacher in an elementary school, so she probably has lots of this type of paper available to her. And it just has, you know, different colors. And the reason I picked the pieces that I did were based on color. This one, it's mostly purple with a little bit of pink, but it also has this kind of buff uh, yellowish color paint in it. And the other one um, that I'm going to use does as well. And then I'm going to use some of this um, coffee dyed. I can tell it's coffee dyed because I can smell the coffee <laughs> when I get it wet. <clears throat> it's like lined paper, like wide lines that you would have to teach ABCs to younger children. So it's got blue lines through it and then it's got the coffee on it which gives it that um, yellowy buff colored tone. So those are the three pieces that I picked because I thought that the colors coordinated really well with each other. And of course, I like purple, so I'm going to be attracted to the purple things that she sent right off the top, you know. Now, this one is painty paper that's made out of, I think is probably a newspaper or an ad from an ad piece from a newspaper. It's got stuff on the back that has printing. And then it's got some of the similar colors of paint on it with some, some more of that yellowy uh, buff tone than the other piece had but it looks like she just took some paint and maybe a um, credit card or old gift card and just spread the paint on the paper to make fun collage paper so that's what I'm doing collaging it onto my art journal page background I'm using Liquitex matte gel medium to do this and also a distress collage brush which makes it very easy. I'm also spraying uh, the paper with water to break down the fibers a little bit and then I'm in some cases using an old, an old gift card to, to smooth the paper down and make sure that it's very well adhered and smooth no bubbles onto my page. So then there was another piece of painty paper with similar colors but a lot more um, pink in a, a brighter, more intense purple. And it had these marks made with, you know, something round, uh, a lid or something, or I don't know what she did exactly, maybe a sponge, a round sponge brush in the center with a some type of a round something <laughs> to make the purple mark. And so I cut some of those out of that piece of paper and I'm gluing them to the left side of my page just because I think it looks cool. Um, I thought it would be fun to have that design element on there. Again, using the matte gel medium, 
um, some of the circles aren't full circles and so I'm putting them on the edges or on the corner to make them look like they're going off the page. It gives the idea that I've made marks, but she's the one who made the marks, <laughs> not me. I just cut them out and collaged them on the page. So I think that looks pretty fun. Um, there was this little <coughs> word happiness on a piece of paper in the pack that she sent me. And then here's some of Gina Bieren's designs stamps that have been stamped with archival ink on some tissue paper. And so I'm going to use some of those. I want to have a really fluffy edge on them so that they blend into the paper really well. So I'm using a water tank brush to just go around the edges of the stamped image and tear off any excess paper and make this kind of um, jagged, fluffy edge that works a lot better when you're using something like this. This is a fun way to, to gain stamped images that you don't have. If you don't have the stamps, you can trade the stamp images that you have that you've stamped on tissue paper with someone else who has different ones and then you get a variety. I don't have either of these stamp sets of Gina's. Um, you know, you can't have everything. <laughs> and so um, it's fun to be able to use them on my page because Leslie owns them and has sent me the pieces. So that's what makes this type of a swap collaboration fun. So she also sent me this little tag that has some splattery paint on it. And I decided to use that um, to put my words on. I'm going to write some words over the top. So there was also a piece of this organza ribbon and I cut some of it off of the piece put it through the tag so that you could tell that it was a tag. Otherwise it would, you know, it wouldn't really look like a tag. I think tags should have their um, fibers or ribbons or whatever on them. <laughs> and then I'm gluing that down to the page in the lower right hand corner. And I'm also going to glue down the, <coughs> the ribbon as well so that it's not sticking out as much. But the piece was thick and it didn't really want to lay down. So sometimes when that happens, I need to press something down, but I want to, don't want to press it down with my fingers because my fingers have a collage medium, you know, Liquitex matte gel medium on them. And when I put them onto the paper, as it starts to dry, my fingers stick to the paper and then pull off pieces of it. So when that happens, when I need to press something, I use a moist baby wipe to do the pressing and the moistness from the baby wipe, you could see me doing it right there, helps me to press down without anything sticking to the paper that I'm trying to glue down. That's just a little tip. So then for these thin tissue -y pieces, I'm using deco art, uh, decoupage, decoupage medium that is for napkins and thin papers. And this stuff, um, it's a lot thinner than the, the gel medium that I'm using to stick all the thicker papers down. It's a, a thin medium and it has something in it that somehow as it dries, it just helps the wrinkles go out from these thin papers. You can't get too crazy with thin paper because if you go over it with something, you know, to try to stretch it and make the wrinkles go out, like I was doing with the thicker papers with the gift card, it tears. Once it gets wet, it's very fra fragile and thin. And this is the same thing with like printed napkins. You know, lots of times we use printed napkins in mixed media collage because they're pretty and they're colorful, but they tear so easy. So I really like this particular uh, deco art medium. It helps me a lot with these thin, thin papers. So I do recommend it. Um, <clears throat> I'll put a link to that medium in the description box below and you can purchase it from DecoArt directly or from Amazon. Um, somebody had posted that they that it was that they weren't making it anymore, but it's still on their site. So if it's on the DecoArt site, it's being, you know, it's something they sell. <laughs> so don't worry people, it's not has not disappeared. It is still available. So then I gave all that a really good dry and I wanted to add a little edge to my page but not being too fussy, like, you know, not drawing it with a line and ruler, you know, something like that with a ruler and a pen or whatever. I just wanted it to be kind of um, darker on the edges. So I took an archival pad and just went around scraping the pad over 
the edges of the paper to give it that rough border. I just, I really like the look of that. You see me doing that a lot probably. So then now it's time to do some detailing. Uh, everything's glued down, everything's dry. I'm going to start adding some color. So I got out some Neocolor 2 water soluble crayons <clears throat> and a water tank brush. And I'm going to color in the stamped images that I've glued down that were stamped on tissue paper with archival ink. You know, archival ink is permanent, so you can go over it with stuff like mediums and you know, this was this is basically watercolor, but it's in a crayon form, and I just I really enjoy these crayons. I if I had to go to a deserted island with only three art supplies, <laughs> these crayons would be one of them. We'll just put it that way. I really enjoy them. I also am using a little bit of white gesso um, to kind of lighten up in areas as I'm coloring the hand because there are some really dark colors in the background. That dark purple, dark, actually intense, more than dark purple. It's actually kind of a bright color, um, but it's it's intense and it shows through the tissue paper. So I just wanted to put a little white gesso as well. And I'm coloring the peace sign. It does have some words on it, I realized, but um, I think it says peace, freedom, love, maybe. But they don't actually show up on the page very much because it's just little tiny words on the, the legs of the peace sign. That hand is just an open drawn hand so you can put whatever you want into the hand. Or if you want it to be a C from the, um, the American Sign Language alphabet, it can also be a C because that's what a C looks like in the sign language alphabet. But I think she more intended you to be able to put things into the hand that could hold things when she drew it. I, I am terrible with drawing hands, so it would be fun to actually own this stamp set and maybe I'll purchase it at some point. Um, speaking of purchasing things like this stamp set on Etsy's shop, you can get a 15% discount if you type in the discount code SHELL, S-H-E-L-1515. So SHELL15 is my discount code for um, anybody who, who watched this video and wants to use it. So I'm continuing to add color with the Neo Color 2 crayons, uh, kind of coloring them directly onto the butterflies now and then also coloring some onto the paper and picking it up with my water tank brush. Um, there's a, that's a couple different ways you can use this Neo Color 2 water soluble crayon product. Color it directly on, blend it. You don't even have to blend it, you can leave it looking like a crayon if you want that kind of scratchy look that a crayon has. Um, sometimes you do. Sometimes you want it blended, sometimes you don't. So then um, once I got all the color on there, I gave it a good dry and then I decided I wanted the lines to be blacker because one thing about the waxy crayon is that it does have some opacity. It does cover up some of the blackness. Plus, you know, this has been stamped on tissue paper in black and then collaged on. So the lines aren't, aren't super black. So I'm taking a fine tip Posca pen. This is an acrylic paint pen. And just going over the lines in not every single line, you know, carefully, but um, going over them and making them darker in some cases. Also, the word happiness was in kind of a dark red brick color on this printed piece of whatever it was. And I wanted it to be black. So I did go over those letters fairly carefully to make them black because there wasn't any brick red on this page. So it just didn't make any sense to have that color word on there. Then I want to put some words uh, in my own handwriting on the tag to uh, say what the page is about. And so I'm doing that. In some cases, I'm drawing the words on first with a pencil and then going over it and darkening them up with the Posca pen. In another case, I'm sometimes just drawing them with the Posca pen. It just depends on if I think I can get everything centered 
my my worst thing with writing other than I just hate my writing is that I I start in the wrong place when I'm writing a word and so it ends up running off the edge and not being centered so sometimes I write with pencil first just to make sure that it works out to be centered on the tag if you know what I mean now right here this is what sometimes happens when you press too hard when you're using a Posca pen or if there happens to be some type of a little like a little bump or ridge on the paper I got a splotch the Posca pen just um, hit something and went <laughs> and that's not cool so I tried to wipe it off but the paper wasn't sealed enough for me to wipe it off while it was still wet so I ended up putting a second piece of paper over the top um, I had added that buff colored coffee stained paper and it just happened that it would be perfect right there for me to put a piece over the top and fix that little bloop. Of course, I'm going to leave that in the video. I, I want everyone to know that nobody's perfect. These things happen. There are ways to fix it and you can't, you don't have to panic and throw the book across the room and into the trash can because you made a little mistake. You just cover it up with something and and move on so while i'm letting that d area dry i am going and adding some more darker colors not going over every single line but just kind of adding here and there some darkness onto the butterfly lines too because now they look too light i'm also making uh, little butterfly trails i always like to do that when i have butterflies flying around i like to make these little funny swirly little dot things that it's like oh that's where they flew you know there's no little butterfly trails in the air but it just looks cute on the page then i also grabbed my uh, black stabilo all pencil highly water soluble pencil to add a little bit of shading um, around the tag so that it stands out from the page more and then also around the hand and the peace sign and a little bit on the bottoms of the butterflies, but not much. Not going crazy with it. Just a little bit here and there. And I'm blending that with my water tank brush, of course. Water tank brush just being a synthetic paintbrush that has water in the handle. So when you squeeze it, it gets a little bit of water coming out through, through a valve. And is very, very handy. I use them a lot. A lot. <laughs> it's so much easier than... than my, my water bucket is on my left hand side and I'm right handed most times I can do I I'm, can do things with both my hands but I generally use my right hand to write with and to do pre precision work and to cross my body and dip a paintbrush into the left is a pain it's just a pain <laughs> so it's nice to have a water tank brush to just not have to keep dipping my paintbrush in water could I put it on the right? Yeah, except for I'm at the end of my table on the left side. And so if the bucket was on my right hand side where it should be, it would be in the middle of the table and constantly getting knocked over. So that's the reason it's over against the wall on the left side. It's just uh, poor planning on my part when I set up the stuff. But the, the water tank brush solves all the problems. So I'm finishing up by writing the rest of my words on my tag and thickening them up. And that's pretty much <clears throat> the end of my art journal page project that I did with the things that I got from Leslie. So thank you, Leslie. This was fun. I have a lot more pieces and parts to use later. And that's always nice too. Added a few little splatters. If you have enjoyed this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up or leave me a comment or question below or both. Subscribe if you haven't already. Um, <clears throat> you can always share this on Pinterest or Facebook. And of course, if this is your last video for today, please click on someone's video who has a million subscribers before you leave so that, my, so that I am not the one who sent you away from YouTube. <laughs> That's it for me. Thanks. Bye-bye.